All right. So uh, welcome to the nth annual packaging in Git buff for some value of n greater than five, I think. <laughs> um, so I hope we can have a boff boff and not a lecture boff. Um, Both of us are employed to lecture. So. That's right. So, so <laughs> if we lecture, you have to pay us, basically. Um, so, so you have to ask lots of questions uh, or we'll charge you money. Um, and the tuition where I teach is frankly exorbitant, so hopefully my <laughs> boss isn't watching this. Um, okay, so um, we don't have a lot of uh, fixed material, but I think uh, part of of what we want to do is, or, or what Sean wants to do, is talk a bit about dgit, which is one uh, aspect of packaging in Git, uh, widely misunderstood, including by me. So that's why <laughs> we're going to uh, talk about it a little bit. But I think just a quick demo, and uh, we'll see where the discussion goes uh, from there. Do we, do we have someone to take questions from IRC? I mean, I guess I can do it if nobody else wants to. Oh, yeah, sure. OK. Um, all right, well, I've got a quick demo of how Git packaging workflows uh, can make people's lives easier. Um, it's worth drawing a distinction between uh, Git workflows for package maintainers and Git workflows for everyone else, right? Because often, the workflow that a package maintainer uses uh, is different from the workflow someone uses who just wants to hack on that package. And this demo is an example of a Git workflow for a non-maintainer. In particular, it's using Git to sponsor an NMU. Okay, so I made this fake NMU last night. It better be um, fake. <laughs> it is, because it's David's package. Um, we can see uh, this guy, a contributor, has made a commit on this not much repository. And the, what you're meant to imagine is that I'm a DD, and I've cloned this repository from GitHub. And this guy has said, hey, can you sponsor this upload? Um, I think it makes things better. And the not much maintainer is ignoring my emails or something like that. Um, totally unrealistic. And, <laughs> and if I'm that DD, one thing I need to do is this, this repository is essentially untrusted. right? I just got this off GitHub. I need to diff this against the archive to see that the NMU doesn't sneak in some, some other changes that uh, I know that David definitely doesn't want to go into his package. Um, how do I do that without Git? Well, I have to build a source package from the repository, and then I have to, so I have to <coughs> dpackage, build package, HS. Right, and then I have to go to the parent directory, and then I have to apt get source not much, make sure I get it from Sid, and then finally I can use deb diff, and then I have to tab complete two horrible source package names, and I can finally see what this guy's doing. Um, and deb diff is uh, is cool, but it's it's simple. It'll only just give you a straight one straight diff of the whole thing. Um, wouldn't it be great if we could use git diff to do this instead, right? Git diff has lots of options. You can filter by file name. Um, you can ignore things, include things. Well, with dgit, you can do that. So I'm not going to touch uh, app get source or deb diff to do this. So I type dgit fetch sid, which means take what's in unstable and make it accessible to git. Ah, oh, hilarious. Yeah. What package you're dealing with at this point? It reads the change log. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try to get fetch on stable sure, instead. Oh, for goodness. Uh, any random repository like this for, for a package? Yes. Video team guy, use the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's telling me. Sorry about that. Um, could you do this in script and then publish the log afterwards so that yes. people can read that? If Would that be you good tell idea? me what to type. I think script. Th that. Script foo. Do I need to redirect it? No, no. It, it'll open a file. And, uh, uh, I'm gonna, can yeah. I do that? To put yeah. it some, OK. OK, cool. Um, thank you. Uh, right, we'll try that again. The directory you were in was it's uh, just not right, there. So. Okay. 
Okay, so it's, we managed to work around that bug, which is good. So you can see it's pulling the not much DSC out of the archive, but you can ignore that. Um, and it's telling you uh, that a, D, a git commit has been synthesized from the DSC, and that's deterministic. So you can do that as many times as you want. It'll always give you the same commit. And then to review the NMU, we just use git diff. So git diff d git slash d git slash sid dot dot head. Hmm, okay, so let's review this diff. They, they seem to be hijacking the package. Good. And hmm, if, we, uh, if we scroll up to the, well, let's see what they did to the change log. So we can filter the diff, because this is what you can easily do with git, to see what they did to the change log. Uh, -ha -ha, not much is mine. Okay, so I'm not going to upload this. <laughs> but, you know, uh, what dgit let us do here was um, diff against the archive in a secure way without having to leave git, um, which I think is very nice. Okay, that was, that was my demo. And then, in order to possibly help us talk, I made a single slide, hopefully covering all the workflows that currently exist in Debian. Um, and this is for, well, <laughs> the main ones. Oh, oh, so I have to interject here. I wanted to call this slide, we are all special snowflakes. But. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, sorry. No, I completely forgot. Here we go. Very good. There we go. Okay, so these are <laughs> Debian Git workflows for maintainers. Right? So the demo was a Debian Git workflow for a sponsor, who's not the main, necessarily the maintainer of a package. These are workflows for maintainers, which is probably what we're more interested in talking about. Um, I split them into three groups. Uh, firstly, there's the uh, Git or dgit plus a helper. So Git build package, Git DPM, and <laughs> David's favorite Git package. Um, there are the workflows that you can do with Git, but dgit can't handle, and these are on the way out, I would say, except for the Haskell team, which has several hundred of them. Which is Sean's favorite team. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, repositories which contain more than one package in one Git repository, dgit can't deal with those. Um, Submodules, can't handle those, and never will. It's, uh, Ian closed it as won't fix. Um, and repositories which only have the packaging in and not the upstream source. Uh, Digit can't deal with those. Um, and then, more recently, we have these new pure workflows, right? And what I mean by pure is, you can think of Digit as an add-on to almost any existing workflow, but these are the ones where you only need Git and Digit, rather than GBP or DPM or something. Um, one of them is a merge-based workflow, which is usable now, and the man page explains it. And then one of them is, is not usable yet. It's a rebasing workflow. Um, I can talk about that more if you want, um, but I'm not going to say anything now. So hopefully this slide will be useful to our discussion. And that's, and it, that's right. all I wanted to say. That's where we're going to stop talking unless yeah. they pay us. Right. OK, great. Have you got a hat to collect coins in? <laughs> Yeah, I hope that works better than when I tried in class. <laughs> so, uh, discussion, Antoine. With a, mic, with a microphone. Um, so, I tried DGIT a while back and stumbled upon a few bugs, which I believe have been fixed now. But the, I didn't see them as much a, a, as bugs as uh, peculiar issues with my peculiar workflow, and I think there are so many ways of doing this that I wonder if part of uh, DGIT's goal is to encompass all of those eventually, or just restrict ourselves to a certain set of best practices, or do we claim there are <laughs> best practices, or wh where do we play in there? Like, for example, a Debian, only Debian subdirectory, I use this sometimes. You're a bad I, person. I, yeah, I know. I'm okay. bad. <laughs> I'm bad. Um, but yeah, like if it's, if it's a wrong practice, I'm ready to change. But if it's just a matter of like, oh, maybe we'll support this eventually, then that's fine too, you know? So I'm curious what you think about that. Uh, yeah. So first thing to say is that um, one confusion um, people have when talking about DGIT is that they think it's a tool on the same level as like GBP or DPM, which gives you a workflow, basically. And it's, although we've got these, these pure workflows where we're saying, okay, we're gonna invent a new workflow that 
capitalizes on DGET, the tool itself imposes basically one requirement, right? And the only requirement it imposes on you is that um, if you take your Git head and pack it into a source package and unpack it again, you get the same thing. That's it. So you can see why it's not going to be compatible with these, because if you only have the Debian subdirectory, if you pack git head, well, you can't pack git head because it doesn't have any upstream source. Um, well, you could, it would not be very useful. You wouldn't be packing git head. You, oh, I suppose you could. <laughs> yeah, anyway. But, um, but that, okay, okay, okay. So pack and unpack, and it's still the package you actually wanted, I suppose. Um, and and that source package builds, I think, is, is something that he left out, but is also true uh, as a constraint. You'd have to build, yes, okay. Oh, so, so does, but get EPM doesn't give you that either. Uh, what do you mean? So in get EPM, my git head has the patches applied. Right. So there's a microphone right beside oh, you, Sam. Okay, thanks. In git, um, the question about whether get DPM actually meets that requirement either. In get DPM, my sources um, have the patches applied in my git head, mm -hmm. whereas, um, oh no, I guess they... They are compatible. No, yeah, but I thought there was magic to make that possible. Okay, there is some very slight magic going on um, to deal with some small corner cases that most of us even aren't even aware of until we bump into them. Um, but if you're trying to decide whether your workflow is DGA compatible, what you need to think about is that requirement that it can be round-tripped through packing into a source package and unpacking. Um, so, but yeah. so just to show my ignorance as BOF co-organizer, what does this mean about patches applied? I mean, there is hackery in DGIT to work with catch patches unapplied, right? There is some hackery to deal with that. Okay. Um, so basically, you just pass an option and it, it does it. Right, okay. But if you, think of a, if you think of a patches unapplied repository, it's still the case that everything's there, and right. when you pack it, you get all the same stuff back. Well, this starts to get a bit philosophical, right? What's everything there? Is a URL enough? I mean... Uh, well, uh, I mean, as compared to the packages where there's only the Debian subdirectory. And a link to the tarball. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, how much magic is allowed? Okay. Uh, I'd like to... Com I, I used the get uh, yesterday or the day before to uh, uh, upload something. Uh, in Great a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was really testing it out. Um, for my package, it did, uh, so it did manipulate, uh, uh, of course, what I had uh, in my Git repository. If I now would push this to um, my, uh, my team's uh, Git repository, it mm. does look weird. It has more history because it, uh, I think what I saw is that it, it made a branch where it uh, applied the the, the patches, so it created git commits for every patch, and then in the merge, it basically re reverted those, such that I had a merge commit which didn't do anything on my master branch, but now I had an extra commit and uh, didn't do anything, and I have an extra piece of history. I think this is uh, at least worth mentioning if you have this unapplied history. It, is this actually, if I would do it multiple times, is this... Uh, going to keep on adding, or is this just a one-time only kind of? Uh, does your team use patches unapplied or applied? Un unapplied. Okay, did you tell DGET that you were using patches unapplied? Yes. Okay, um, well, I mean, I'd have to look at it. What I'm guessing is going on is that DGET, DGET wants to make sure that what you've got is a fast forward of what it thinks is in the archive. So but it lets you override it. So it creates a branch representing what I just did there with dgit fetch, and then merges what you did on top of that. But yeah, that'll... It, it, it did merge it into my master branch. Your master branch changed? Yes, with one commit, which uh, didn't do anything. Okay. Uh, oh, so it would have been a pseudo merge commit. Right, so it was just joining the histories. Um, that will only happen if someone does a non dgit upload before you do your next dgit upload. So, so the first dgit upload will always have this little bit of history strangeness, I yeah. guess, for most people. And so, but I guess. But also, right. I guess, if there's a new upstream or not. Uh, no, if you, as long as every upload to the archive is made with dgit, then it won't do that. But on most teams, I guess you could expect. 
You expect some skew. S some back and forth. Yeah. People using DGET, people not using DGET. I mean, that's, oh, Gregor knows we're always trying interesting things in the Perl team. And uh, sometimes it's, uh, you know, the coolest technique is only useful if it's useful to the people on the team, right? So, um, I um, guess. I, I was also wondering, uh, which I haven't dared to try yet by really pushing because uh, well, afraid of messing too much with my history. I have a, a couple of patches which actually carry a big patch set, mm. uh, which typically, of course, with new upstream needs to be, uh, uh, the, the patch needs to be patched. Yeah. <laughs> um, in, an, in an unmerged workflow, would that Right. So work if, if because basically uh, I w I'm afraid that I get one one merge where I have to resolve all my yeah. conflicts, which I don't think is good for inspection later on, right. because it does include upstream changes as well. So there's basically two choices in this situation. If you have so a package which has a substantial and semi-permanent series of big modifications, which we we have in Debian. Um, there's basically two choices. You either do patches applied and use GBP, um, which DGET supports, or you wait a little bit longer and then we'll have this rebasing workflow. Um, but yeah, unfortunately at the moment, if you're in that situation, it's not the best tool. But this is, this is not a DGET, DGET buff, so <laughs> we should talk about all the other options that there are. <laughs> oh, so currently indeed on, in this workflow, I'm. I'm Manually doing the the, the git up uh, the the kilt updating of the patches by applying it one by one to see every time what I'm actually doing. Right, you can use GBPPQ uh, to make that a little bit easier. So I, I'm curious, how many teams or people are using patches applied workflows? In okay, me, but. So, so it's a minority of people still, right? Okay. And, um, that's How many are using patches applied? Mm. How many are not paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> to the boff or to their How packages? How many should use microphones? <laughs> Can we get a microphone? Oh, Sam needs a mic. Actually, why don't, you, why don't we trade stuff here? Um, so, um, is there an easy way? No, no, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm unlikely to need a mic. I, it will be good for me to not have a mic. That's <laughs> um, so. Um, is there a way to convert? Like, if I have a checkout that currently has patches applied, um, and I'd really like to at least for the moment look at it patches unapplied for easier diff stuff. Is there a way to get that? I don't, I don't need to commit it. I just, there are times where sure. looking at a diff, it would be really nice to actually get a patches unapplied version of a tree, even though that's not what Git DPM gives me. So I might be able to help there. So I wrote a tool called Git Deb Cherry, which is included in Git package, but it's not especially tied to Git package. And it can uh, extract a quilt patch series from a patch apply, patches applied repository. And um, of course, that's sometimes a little tricky to do with, with complicated history. So um, no, no, no. I've got a good pa patch series already. OK. So this is get D I have a get DPM repository. Oh, I see. I just wanted... wish to, I, I want to turn my perfectly good, I have a great Debian slash patches directory. I don't have the quilt metadata to do a quilt pop dash A. Right. Ah. There, I don't know of a tool that does that, uh, apart from unpacking the average tar in another directory or, or something. Okay, that's sad. But the other direction is definitely possible. Yeah, I know, but that's not. The, but I, I use get dpm, so that's not the problem I ever I have. I see. I see. Yeah, if you're someone who prefers patches applied, and you sorry, yeah, yeah, uh, right, you prefer patches applied, you can always get that. Um, yep. Pretty straightforwardly, yeah. It's, it's, I, I prefer get DPM, I just sometimes need better diffs. Okay. Yeah. If it's just a one-shot thing, I'm pretty sure you can use it. I'd have to 
If it's just a Hello. Out, hang on, hang on. Hello. Uh, if it's just a one-shot thing, uh, I'm pretty sure, but I have to check. There's a git command you could run to basically check out everything but the Debian directory relative to upstream, and you'd get the tree you wanted. But uh, that may or may not be that may be too much surgery. <laughs> oh, that's great. Actually, that'll work. So you think, Rob? Are you thinking like a git work tree? Uh, there's an option to git checkout that you can, you know, just tell it. I think you can even tell it. I know you can tell it individual files, but you can also tell a subtree and give it a commit, and I think it'll just revert right. that part of the tree. But Sam would need to have the upstream, the whole upstream history in his git repository. I do. Well, okay, if he's then. using git dpm, he probably does. Okay. But <laughs> we got lots of time, don't worry. Okay, so what I, but what I want here is, um, so you're saying I should check out the upstream tree, then graft in the Debian tree from the commit I want. Well, I was actually proposing the opposite, uh, but... And how, can it would, I, how can I do the opposite? Uh, you, you basically tell check out, um, you would tell get to check out the upstream tree, ignore accepting the Debian directory. Ah. I think we, we okay. have some feedback back here on, sure. on this topic. Great. Pass the mic. If it's just a diff you're after, the other approach is just to use filter diff. Right. Or I think Git has the ability to filter by paths. So if all you want is a diff of the Debian directory in the patches and you don't care about the direct changes in upstream, you can just you need to filter diff it or specify a path on git diff, and that should give you the diff you want. You can also filter git here. All right. I mean, so this is getting a bit sure, sure. narrow. I mean, so, so, yep. Gregor. Sorry about that. No, no worries. I mean, it's a narrow bar, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> so let, uh, I'd like to ask a simple question. I haven't really paid attention to Tiki's development in the last three years or something. So what is actually the advantage of using Tiki as a maintainer for one's own packages over just git build package? Uh, uh, okay, I'll try and mention Hello. as many as I can, I can remember. You get a bunch of extra safety checks. Um, so there are certain things that keep happening in Debian, like your changes file has a different distribution to your change log or something like that, and DGIT protects you from those. Uh, and secondly, you're sharing your full Git history with your users. So um, that's good for them, but also if they send you patches, they're going to be based on your history. Um, so, okay, what I, what I have in... We need Mike, sorry, it's big room. So, uh, okay, so then why don't you rephrase that? Um, Can you, Git help you, us with microphone? You make your history accessible via DGIT clone. Um, whereas right now, if someone wants to get the source of your package, they have to try and find it on Alioth, right? And for Deb, right, when Deb Checkout can try and find it on Alioth for them. Um, but Deb Checkout will give, can give you a different thing every time. So if I deb check out a Perl repository, it's probably going to be pretty sane. If I deb check out a Haskell package, I'm going to get all the Haskell packages. Um, that's quite a confusing interface. DGIT clone is, always gives you the same thing. And that mean, that's good for attracting new contributors and probably contributors to your package. Um, someone can always DGIT clone. But if you DGIT pushed, they get a more useful history. 
just was going to add that maybe we need to fix the cases where when you do the checkout, you get something that changes. But like with the current control file um, fields, we should be getting just the package repository. And I think we should aim for that. Sure, it's, it's an interesting aim, but okay. Hands up everybody who has ever forgotten to push their changes. All right, come on. <laughs> All right. And hands up everybody who's done an upload without a VCS, the correct VCS field. Right? I mean, these things happen. Uh, so even if, uh, and I'm, I'm asked this same question and, and work, but I think this actually, this uniformity is a big benefit. Even if the Git checkout you get is this rather crude history of one commit per upload, it still makes it easier for somebody not knowing the intricacies of quilt and source packages to patch the Debian package. I mean, the underlying assumption here is that there are more people in the world that know Git than that know quilt. I and think that's a fair assumption. And just to expand on that, um, so you asked about benefits for maintainers. This is more of a benefit for users, but it's connected, so worth mentioning. Um, if, you're a, if you're someone who's moderately new to free software, and you're just getting into the idea that you can modify the stuff on your own machine, you're going to be wanting to do that in Git. So um, suppose I, I find a package and I find a bug, and there's some bu bureaucratic reason why it can't be fixed upstream right now. Um, but I want to share that modification with my friend, dgit lets me do that in git. So I can dgit clone the package, apply my fix with a git commit, and then just push that to GitHub or wherever and share that with someone else who has the same problem. Um, whereas right now, because we have, this is one of Debian's guarantees with a stable release. We say, look, uh, you can t uh, modify any of the packages in the stable release, and we provide the build dependencies so you can rebuild them. Um, but we only provide that in the form of apt get source, which is hard to share. Um, Digit improves on that. Um, you just said you get a raw history of uh, one commit per release. Is that uh, already the case? Uh, because I think it just gives you the latest one, right? It does. There's a there's a bug that it's, sorry, an open bug that it could give you a, a one commit per whatever it can find. But right now it only gives you the latest one. Yeah. I guess you have to implement that first on the dgit server, inject all the packages or something like that. Right, there's, there's, some, there's some ideas, but if people are using dgit push, then this, this becomes irrelevant. Um. Uh, a, a question about that, if you, um, I think there was this, this uh, overwrite kind of option in dgit. Yeah. Does that mean that um, on the dgit uh, view, indeed, you you lose all the old history, and just my my Git tree as I now have it is the the Git tree that oh you no. would get. You can't overwrite what's on the DGit servers um, because then the history wouldn't be fast forwarding. Uh, what uh, what the overwrite option is saying is DGit thinks you're going to lose something here, and you're saying no, it's okay. I've got all the changes. It's, it's mainly designed to prevent you from accidentally failing to incorporate an NMU. So actually, that's another advantage. DGIT won't let you push if it thinks you might have missed an NMU. You have to tell it. But how, how can I now uh, then um, upload my uh, package history that I currently have if you already have a, a DGIT push once before? Then you would just use overwrite, and it would merge your stuff over the top of the stuff that's there. Um, question here. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I know that you have uh, thought this over because, well, I, I know who you are. But uh, one thing that I have uh, left pending here is that how is this integrated for uh, uh, groups working, say, uh, say the, the Perl, the Ruby, the, the, all those groups that use uh, version control to handle large uh, amounts of packages. Is something thought uh, for, the, for the workflows? Sorry, can you uh, repeat yeah. the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I mean, I mean uh, what I'm missing here is that, uh, well, I know that I've, uh, I am not active as I was once in, uh, in those communities, but uh, I, I, I still follow more or less 
uh, uh, try to follow what, what's done there. Uh, how does these uh, workflows integrate with things that go beyond individual packages uh, uh, to, okay. to the w workings of so, uh, whole groups? So I guess in the, I mean, I, uh, the only setup like that I know is the Perl team, but uh, essentially it has tools to iterate across repos. And so the iteration is happening at a level above Git, right? Uh, as opposed to with SVN when you would, say, commit changes to a bunch of packages at once, atomic-ishly. Um, so I guess you would have to uh, do the, the same changes, but I think that uh, there's two different questions here. There's how you arrive at the thing you're ready to upload and how you upload it. And the how you arrive, for example, by running sed across 2,000 packages, um, doesn't change. Uh, but then instead of doing 2,000 uploads with dput, you could also do them with dgit push. Uh, that would be an interesting would be an interesting test of the dgit server. Yes, it would. <laughs> well, it is 2,000 commits now for, for, for the Perl team, and they're only, they happen more or less contemporaneously at the same time, but they're not atomic in any sense. Uh, they're only as atomic as the tools are bug-free. <laughs> right. so, I don't know, Gregor, do you have any no. disagreement? Not on this topic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. More questions? Yes, in the back. Hey, is DGit a good tool for me to use if I want to collaborate with other people who are not Debian developers? Like I'm working inside a company or just with my friends or something? Sorry, yeah. Uh, if I'm working at a company or with my friends or something and I want to add local patches to Debian repositories, is DGit a good place to start? Uh, I've had good success using Git repositories for packages where the upstream, that is the Debian team, is using Git, but sticking things into Git at work, like importing it from an SVN or just not packaged at all workflow is sort of weird, and I would like to use DGit. Are the tools there for me to do that? Uh, so DGit, one of the design philosophies of DGit is that it, you only have to use DGit when source packages are involved. Um, if you're not dealing with source packages, it should just be part something you can do with Git, not dget. Right. So we are generating source packages because we're building locally patched Debian packages. So I'm going to generate version 1.0 plus my company one or something, and we're going to mm -hmm. have some weirdo local patch in there. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, dget would let you obtain would let you obtain from Debian the thing you're going to base your work on okay. in, already in Git. Okay. No matter what the Debian maintainer does. Okay. So that. That's an advantage. Is so. it going to give me any tooling for managing source packages in my own repository, my own private repository? Uh, I think like, Plugwash might have I more to say, but I'm not, <laughs> so, I don't think so I know what I think you're I, trying so, to do. So I, I might be, have well, enough distance here to, to see where <laughs> you're going. Um, uh, so I think the, the managing source packages in a repository isn't really a thing according to DGIT. Um, it really likes to think that they're ephemeral, that, that okay. source right. packages okay. are disposed. Oh, okay. getting very excited. Okay, go. So this is like goes to the question of how to build a derivative distribution, right? <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> and, and the point is that in DGIT, it doesn't care where it's pushing things and where it's uploading things as long as you tell it the right URLs to upload to. So by default, it uploads to dot Debian dot URL for digit repository, URL for uh, Debian archive, URL for FTP master, and etc. And in your digit packages, you could change that config to pull from Debian, yet upload into your own private repository. And it will, yes. if you provide the APIs which match the digit server APIs, and if your repository looks somewhat like Debian, then it should be quite easy to tell it pull from here, but push there. <laughs> you, you just have yeah. to buy an enterprise license for the digit server. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, in case anybody didn't get, that was a joke. Please do not <laughs> attack Ian for... Yeah, <laughs> however, <laughs> like for example, for Ubuntu, we haven't yet worked out how to integrate the merge workflow for merging from Digit history of Debian and basing Ubuntu Digit history on top of and merged with Debian Digit history. Because for us, we want to merge packages, ideally. Right, right. <laughs> That's not clear yet. We want Git merge to do the right thing with all the patch queues and everything. Right. <laughs> That's really hard. More questions? Complaints? People who want to revive Git 3.0. Who remembers Git 3.0? <laughs> Who here is an FTP master? Okay, good. It's safe to talk about it then. <laughs> so, Sam needs a mic. Despite his previous claims. I, I, I guess I'll say that I certainly, there are times when I find dealing with Git 3.0, or with 3.0 Quilt and Git frustrating enough that I am so tempted to, um, um, go randomly hook the package to override the package source so that it'll accept the native version somehow um, and then use 3.0 native or just you know drop Debian revisions for my packages because if uh, Gillum's going to be uh, that way then I can be that way too because <laughs> um, like seriously there are times where 3.0 quilt just gets to be such a pain so, so, so you're proposing a social solution to a technical problem. Yes. <laughs> Deb, Deb Helper taught me that works well. Um, so the, when it, I mean, I could talk about the dgit main to rebase workflow just for a minute, because that might be what you want. Um, so I do not fully understand this yet, because uh, it will, it's not done, basically. Um, but how this dgit main rebase workflow will work is your repository will have the upstream source and an uh, in patches unapplied with a Debian directory. And then each patch will be represented by a commit, and that will get pushed to the dgit servers. Now, obviously, you're going to want to rebase uh, and move those around, especially when you merge a new upstream version. How is that going to work? Well, roughly, dgit, uh, or, well, it's actually not going to be part of dgit because it's not about source packages. Um, rewind to the upstream source and rebase your patches however you want, and then merge that on top of the old patch queue. So, uh, do we have, we don't have a whiteboard marker. Okay. Um, you will, you'll get a, trape a trapezoid pattern in your Git history. Um, but, and then in the source package, the patches will probably just be squashed because the thought is, well, if the patch history is a beautiful series of commits on the dgit server, it doesn't really matter what goes into the source package. So that's coming soon. Uh. So, so our video overlords inform us we have five minutes. So if you've been working up the courage to ask a question and you're really bored of dgit, <laughs> now's your chance. Yes. As long as it has something to do with git. Oh, there we go. So um, is there a plan for how to deal with packages in Git that are inconveniently large. Uh, so like data for games, that kind of thing. Mm. I'm thinking of Open Arena data here, which is enormous. There is no plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's a hard problem. But I mean, if, you, if, we're using, if we're using Git workflow, like we've got good Git workflows for 90% of packages. That's enough for me. Is there a, a plan for dealing with those packages in Debian? I mean, do, do they work bit, generally? Yeah, I guess the, that's off the, topic. Sorry, I'm, I'm breaking my own rule about having something to do with Debian. <laughs> so, anyway. Any other? Yes, Don. Maybe s switching gears just a little bit. Um, is there any? Has anybody thought about how we might indicate or better connect when? bugs, something that I care about, are closed in specific uh, git commits to, to packages. Uh, I mean, one of the things that I keep wishing that somebody would make easy 
is the ability to graft on the Git uh, tree onto a set of bugs so that you know that, ah, yes, it was found in this version, and in this commit-ish, it, it was uh, fixed. So the BTS could, in theory, track the Debian-directed graph of versions that depend on which mapped onto the Git tree at the same time. Uh, so if, if anybody thinks that's exciting or has comments on that, uh, I'd love to see somebody give me patches that do all that. So it sounds like a job for Git notes, which are unfortunately sort of half implemented. I mean, they're getting better, but... but um, so we did make some tools, which I don't think were very widely deployed, but we made some tools to experiment with in the package Perl team to track not bug metadata per se, but a patch workflow like this patches forwarded and attach that to specific uh, git commits. And that more or less worked uh, from a technical point of view. I mean, it, it's a question of uh, did we end up using it? No, but, or I say we loosely, did the team end up using it? Seems like a reasonable place to end. If no yeah, one has anything else to say. Sure. So, uh, oh, uh, Alvarez always has a question. Good. Run out the clock. <laughs> I just an idea that popped into my mind. Would this be a, a good, good way of converting your uh, latest SVN repository to uh, a Git repository by just going into dgit or? Oh, you mean like you just doing dgit clone and working from there? I, it would be the throw away all your history approach, which. I mean, given the way most people use SVN, that's probably perfectly reasonable. <laughs> hey. I said most people, not including anyone in this room, of course. Uh, thanks for coming. All right, thanks a lot. That was a great pop, guys. And girls, and others. <laughs>